about time to wrap things up. At least that's what the West, the U.S. included, is signaling to Ukrainian President Zelensky about the country's almost two-year war with Russia. The U.S. mission to NATO um, all but spelled it out in a recent post pushing for peace at this point, saying, quote, we are focused on setting the conditions for a just, durable, and sustainable peace. And an official seemed to walk that statement back hours later, posting, quote, let's be clear, we reaffirm our enduring commitment to Ukraine and its people. And durable peace means not caving to Russia's brazen attempts to redraw borders by force. Meanwhile, in an interview with Eurasia magazine, economist and professor at Columbia University, Jeffrey Sachs explained how a 30-year-old promise the U.S. made to Russian President Gorbachev in 1990 that NATO would not expand into Eastern Europe was broken just two years later and led to the war in Ukraine. Here to delve further into this with us is Dr. Jeffrey Sachs himself. Thank you for joining us. Oh, great to be with you. Thank you. All right. So this this question on everybody's mind is how bad faith were Americans' commitments to basically fund Ukraine to the end? Because what it appears to be the case now is that we had an almost two-year war, the, at the beginning of which were opportunities for a negotiated peace, which was scuttled by the U.S. and the U.K. And now it seems that America's attention is divided with the conflict in Gaza. It's basically giving up on Ukraine and telling it to wrap things up, suggesting that America's investment in that particular conflict was not one of principle. What do you make of this? Well, the war has been going on for nine years uh, since uh, the U.S. participated in the uh, violent overthrow of a Ukrainian president that wanted neutrality for his country, not NATO. Uh, and since February 2014, uh, the war has been going on, but of course it escalated tremendously with Russia's special military operation that began on February 24th, 2022. During this whole period, the U.S. had a weak hand and it played it terribly, absolutely disastrously. Uh, at every step, Ukraine could have been saved, but the United States kept upping the ante and Ukraine kept losing more. What I mean by this is that when the United States proposed to expand NATO to Ukraine, the Russians said, no way. That goes back to 2008, by the way, but the original promise of no NATO enlargement goes back to the uh, late 1980s and early 1990s. But in any event, after 2008, President Putin and the whole Russian political class was absolutely clear, do not do this. Then the United States got mixed up. Victoria Nuland uh, was the point person in, in the overthrow of a Ukrainian president. <laughs> Uh, President Viktor Yanukovych, uh, and then uh, Russia retook Crimea. It wasn't, it wasn't even demanding Crimea. It was demanding a lease on its naval base until 2042, but then it took Crimea. Then the United States upped the ante, started sending in weapons. We've got your back. President Putin said in December 2021, let's negotiate over this. The United States said, no way, it's none of your business. Special military operation started. Ukraine said in March 2022, okay, okay, we can be neutral, we can be neutral. The war could have ended immediately then. But the United States intervened and said, no, 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 we've got your back. <laughs> you don't have to be neutral. We're going to expand NATO. And this was terrible mistakes, predictably terrible mistakes. They kept upping the ante. Now Ukraine has lost hundreds of thousands of people. The population has, it's, it's declined by millions because of mass emigration, partly to Russia, partly to, uh, to uh, Western Europe. Uh, the military losses on the battlefield are mounting. So of course, they've just done a terrible job. And I've been saying this to the White House every step of the way. And of course, then the Gaza war began to diverted attention. But even before October 7, and even before this new disaster in the Middle East, Ukraine was in a terrible failing position because of so many US mistakes and the Ukrainians following the U.S. lead, even though it was predictably disastrous. It's so easy to see, but 
Biden played it wrong at every at every moment. All right. So many uh, voices like yourself, like other people we've had on this program, um, t- t- you know, go, going through that storyline just like you have and, and saying that obviously there will come a point where they have to negotiate because Ukraine cannot really hope to defeat Russia. The idea that Vladimir Putin is going to be toppled is fanciful. And yet the Biden administration said that they would, that we're going to support this war effort for as long as it takes, implying even if it takes forever, we'll support it. Now we learn, of course, that's not true. There's a finite amount of uh, time and attention and resources we're willing to commit to this conflict, and it's about over. Um, is is this a case where you know what 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 were the what were the intelligence what were the defense experts um, thinking behind closed doors? You might have more insight than we do. Did they? Were they naive, or did they actually think that somewhere before this point, where we're not willing to uh, to fund the resistance any longer, that they were actually going to deal a lethal blow to Russia, or at least eject them from the country? Robbie, you know, I'm an old guy, so I've been through this a lot of times uh, with Vietnam, with uh, Afghanistan, we all saw now with Ukraine. This is a standard operating procedures of the United States overpromise, oversell, get into proxy wars, uh, and then they fail. Uh, so this is uh, happening. Now, did David Petraeus really believe uh, in June of this year that uh, Ukraine's going to make a decisive breakthrough and shock everybody? I don't know. Uh, maybe he did. But uh, people <laughs> who were watching this closely absolutely said, no way, are you kidding? Uh, And uh, of course, those other people were right. Uh, We've uh, run out of time. We've run out of patience. We've run out of budget support. We've run out of uh, 155 millimeter shells. And tragically, Ukraine's running out of soldiers. So that old uh, line of uh, that we are in there till the last Ukrainian is tragically, literally, happening right now in the sense that Ukraine has lost hundreds of thousands of people in this absolutely stupid, avoidable conflict. So it's going to stop. It has to stop. Uh, NATO, that means the United States, by the way, it doesn't mean anything else. It means the United States has to help (laughs) to end this in the most favorable way by saying Exactly. Okay. Okay. We're not going to enlarge. It was some lame brain idea uh, of uh, George W. Bush Jr. And we kept it going and we should have negotiated with you. The whole thing was a stupid idea. We're going to have to say that because otherwise Russia's not going to accept a a ceasefire or something when the United States is going to come back in and say, oh, NATO's enlarging. They don't want NATO there and they're going to make sure that NATO's not there and we need to negotiate like grown-ups and play a hand that we have, not a hand of wishful thinking. Uh, otherwise, Ukraine's just going to continue to lose more and more and more. Yeah, such an important point about the, the human cost uh, on the military. I, I saw it reported that Ukraine's starting to recruit conscript women into the military. And Max Blumenthal uh, posted a disturbing video uh, earlier this week of new recruits who all looked to be men in their 50s and, and 60s. So it does look like um, there's been just a, an incredible human toll on the people of Ukraine who have been made to fight this proxy war. But I did want to turn uh, to this new reporting about the Nord Stream pipeline. Last week, it was reported that Ukrainian military official Roman Travinsky played a central role in the 2022 sabotage of the Nord Stream pipeline. Now, according to the Washington Post, which first First reported the revelation, he led a six-person team to blow up the pipelines that carried natural gas from Russia to Germany. This isn't Ukraine's first foray into Russian assets, but the attack implicated civilian infrastructure, potentially disrupting energy, obviously, for millions of Europeans. You know, what do you make of of this new reporting? How credibly, credulously should we be looking at it in light of the kind of wave of stories that we've seen coming out offering different explanations for who is responsible for Nord Stream? By the way, first thing, don't believe anything the government says. It Mm. makes up whatever is convenient. And so there's absolutely no credibility to pinning it on one person who happens to be uh, under wraps uh, and uh, in custody in Ukraine. So 
Uh, I'm uh, still going with Seymour Hirsch till I hear otherwise, uh, but who knows? I testified in the UN Security Council uh, on a session calling for an independent UN-led investigation. Who blocked it? The United States government. So, hmm. you know, a leak in the post, come on, of course, what do we know? But what we do know, even from that leak, is the CIA now tells us, oh, we knew all about this and we even warned them against it. Whereas others say, ah, the CIA trained this guy. Whereas others say this is yet another cover story because uh, the one that Seymour Hirsch talked about is the real story. I don't know. But what I do know is the United States has blocked any real investigation of this. And at the beginning, when Nord Stream was blown, the first words pointed by all the mainstream media was, oh, look what the Russians have done, mm -hmm. which was obviously phony and another narrative. So we should be used to rampant government lying on something like this. And we need an independent investigation. The UN is the place to do it. And the United States raised its hand to block such an independent investigation. But that's exactly what we need. We're so grateful that Dr. Sachs was able to join us. We have another interview with him that will come out during the Thanksgiving holiday. You won't want to miss it.